Hola, gente linda. Hello, beautiful people. Gente linda means beautiful people in Spanish. I am Nelly Z. My goal for my YouTube channel is to study the topics for the licensed clinical social worker exam together and share this material with someone who may need it. First, I would like to share a quote to continue to be inspired and motivated to carry on with this journey. Secondly, we will continue learning about Simon Freud's theory and learn about him. I hope that this will be the last video about him and his theory. I think we are just learning the basic points of Mr. Freud's theory for our licensed clinical social work exam. As Mr. Simon Freud is also called the father of psychoanalysis. I will link the article so you can review them in, if you like at your convenience. Finally, thank you for taking the time to listen to this video. If you would like to receive a notification when I upload a video, Please subscribe and don't forget to like this video so we can all maximize the gift of the technology of this time. Adios, mi gente linda, and many blessings. Okay, so here is the quote. One day in retrospect, the years of a struggle will strike you are the most beautiful. And this quote was from Mr. Simon Freud. Let's read it again. One day, in retrospect, the years of struggle will strike you as the most beautiful. What a smart guy that Mr. Freud was. So now let's go to Miss uh, to Google, Google, Doctor Google. I call it Doctor Google because you really can find so much information in Google. And we will go to the last article that we were uh, reading because I was reviewing the article, and I saw that we should really explore the article a little bit more because. There were some concepts that I, th I think it needs more um, more reading. So the unconscious mind and preconscious mind and conscious mind. The famed psychoanalysis, Simon Freud believed that behavior and personality were derived from the constant and unique interaction of conflicting psychological forces that operate at three level, three different levels of awareness. The preconscious, conscious, and unconscious minds. He believed that each of these parts of the mind plays an important role in influencing behavior. In order to understand Freud's theory, it is essential to understand what he believed each, each part of personality did, how it operated, and how these three elements interact to contribute to the human experience. Each level of awareness has a role to play in shaping human behavior and so, and here, remember that? We saw it in another article, uh, this figure, the iceberg. Freud's three levels of mind, the unconscious mind, the preconscious mind, the unconscious mind, and here is the water, and this is we are the conscious mind, and this is the pre-conscious mind, and this is the unconscious mind that we are not aware. So, let's see. And here a little bit more about Mr. 
Simon Freud. Simon Freud was the founder of the psychoanalytic theory. While his ideas were considering shocking at the time, and he created debate and controversy, even now, his work had profound influence on a number of disciplines, including psychology, sociology, anthropology, literature, and even art. In terms of psychoanalysis, it is used to refer to many aspects of Freud's work and research, including Freudian therapy and the research methodology he used to develop his theories. Freud relied heavily upon his observation and case study of his patient when he formed his theory of personality development. Okay, we want to Review that. Okay, so we just read this. Freud's three levels of mind. Freud delineate the mind in distinct levels, each with their own role and functions. The three levels of mind are the preconscious, consists of anything that could potentially be brought into the conscious mind. The conscious mind con contains all the thoughts, memories, feelings, and wishes of which we are aware at any given moment. This is the aspect of our mental processing that we can think and talk about rationally. This is also includes our memory, which is not always part of consciousness but can be retrieved easily and brought into awareness. The unconscious mind is a reservoir of feelings, thoughts, urges, and memory that outside of our conscious awareness. The unconscious contains contents that are unacceptable or unpleasant, such as feeling of pain anxiety or conflict. Hmm. Freud liked the three levels of mind to an iceberg. The top of the iceberg you can see about the water represents the conscious mind. The part of the iceberg that is submerged below the water, but still visible is the preconscious, is the preconscious the bulk of the iceberg that lies and sea beneath the waterline represents the unconscious mind, often also referred to the simply as the unconscious. And here is another video. I won't play it because you won't hear it for some reason, but you can you can play it by your own. How the unconscious mind affects behavior. While the information in the unconscious mind is outside of awareness, so that's something important. The unconscious mind is outside of awareness. It continues to have an influence on a person's behavior. Some of the ways the unconscious can affect behavior include negative thoughts, self-defeated thoughts and behavior, feeling of anger, compulsive behaviors childhood behavioral problems, difficulties in interpersonal relationships, distressing pattern in romantic relationships, attitude about others, unhealthy habits, mm. distressing dreams, first impression of others, prejudices and stereotypes. And here is the Freudian sleep. sleep. Another example of the unconscious mind can be seen in what are known as slips of the tongue. Many of us have experienced what is commonly referred to as a Freudian slip. At some point or another, these misstatements are believed to reveal underlying unconscious thoughts or feelings. Freud believed that while the unconscious mind is largely inaccessible, 
the contents can sometimes bubble up unexpectedly, such as in a dream or sleep of the tongue. An example of Freudian sleep is a man who accidentally uses a former girlfriend's name. We're referring to current girlfriend, while most of us my belief is to be a simple error. Freud believed that the sleep show, showed the sudden introduction of the unconscious mind into the conscious mind, often to do to unresolved or repressed feeling. Accessing the unconscious mind. According to Freud, thoughts and emotion outside of our awareness continue to extend and influence on our behavior. Even though we are unaware, unconscious or this underlying influences, the unconscious mind can include repressed feelings, hidden memories, habits, souls, desires, and reactions. Memories and emotions that are too painful, embarrassing, shameful, or distressing to consciously face are stored in the enormous reservoir, like the serva, reservoir that makes up the unconscious mind. To identify the roots of a, a psychological distress, Freud employed techniques like dream analysis and Freud association. The sharing of seemingly random thought to bring true feelings to life. Role of the preconscious mind. The content of the conscious mind includes all things that you are actively aware. The closely related preconscious mind contains all things that you could potentially pull into conscious awareness. The preconscious also acts as something of a guard controlling the information that is allowed to enter into conscious awareness. Preconscious memory are not the same thing as memories that are readily access, such as remembering your way home. They are unrepressed memories that we extract for a specific purpose at the specific time. Interesting. Okay, so we're gonna go now. Guess where? So let's talk about these three elements. The it, ego, superego, Freud's elements of personality. According to Simon Freud, human personality is complex as more than a single component. In his famous psychoanalytic theory, Freud states that personality is composed of three elements known as the id, the ego, and the superego. These elements work together to create complex human behaviors. Each component at his own unique contribution to personality. And three interact in ways that have powerful influence on an individual. Each element of personality emerges at different points in life. According to Freud's theory, certain aspects of your personality are more primal and my pressure you to act upon your most basic orders. Other parts of your personality work to counteract this order and strive to make you conform to the demands of reality. Hmm, interesting. Here is a closer look at each of these key parts of the personality, how they work individually and how they interact. It, I need to eat right. This second ego, hmm, here is the judge, super ego, 
You can do that because you are in the middle of an important meeting. Hmm. Interesting. You see, there is a figure. The it, according to Freud, the it is the source of psyche energy, making the primary component of personality. The it is the only component of personality that is present from birth. This aspect of personality is entirely unconscious, includes instinctive and primitive behaviors. The it is driven by the pleasure principle, which strives for immediate gratification of all desire, wants, and needs. If these needs are not satisfied immediately, the result is a state of anxiety or tension. For example, an increase in hunger or thirst should produce an immediate attempt to eat or drink. The eat is very important early in life because it ensures that the infant's needs are met. If the infant is hungry or uncomfortable, they will try until the demands of the eat are satisfied. Young infants are ruled entire by the eat. There is no reasoning with them when these needs are demand satisfac satisfaction. The example of the eat, imagine trying to convince a baby to wait until lunchtime to eat their meal. The ear requires immediate satisfaction. And because the other component personalities are not yet present, the infant will cry until these needs are fulfilled. Mm -hmm. However, immediately fulfilled these needs are not always realistic or even possible. It will be ruled entirely by the pleasure principle. We may find ourselves grabbing the things that we want out of other people's hands to satisfy our cravings. This behavior will be both destructive and socially unacceptable. According to Freud, the E tries to resolve the tension created by the pleasure principle through the use of primary process thinking, which involves forming a mental image of the desired object to satisfy the need. I thought people eventually learn to control the eat. This part of personality remains the same infantile primal force throughout life. It is the development of the ego and the superego that allows people to control the eat's basic instincts and act in ways that are both realistic and socially acceptable. The ego, according to Freud, the ego develops from the id, ensures that impulses of the id can be expressed in a manner acceptable. In a real world, the ego functions is the conscious, preconscious, and the unconscious mind. The ego is the personality component responsible for dealing with the reality. I've seen a question like, which one in the ego deals with the reality, the future or the past, which is now we know the ego deals with the reality. Everyone has an ego. The term ego is sometimes used to describe your cohesive, Awareness of your personality, but personality and ego are not the same. The ego represents just one component of your full personality. The ego operates based on the reality principle. So here we have the reality principle and what is primary process? No, I wanted to see the other principle which was what's the other principle for the it? Pleasure principle. Hmm. So the it is the pleasure principle. And the ego is the reality principle. 
The ego operates based on the reality principle, which strives to satisfy the its desire in reality and socially appropriate ways. The reality principle weights the cause and benefits on action before deciding to act upon or abandon impulses. In many cases, the its impulses can satisfy through a process or delay gratification. The ego will eventually allow the behavior, but only in the appropriate time and place. The term ego is often used informally to suggest that someone has an inflated sense of self. However, the ego and personality has a positive effect. It is the part of your personality that keeps you grounded in reality and prevents the id and superego from pulling you too far toward your most basic urges or morality virtues. Having a strong ego means having a strong sense of self-awareness. Freud compared the id to a horse and the ego to the horse's rider. Hmm, interesting. The horse provides power and motion while the rider provides direction and guidance. Without his rider, the horse would wander whatever he wishes and do whatever he please. The rider gives the horse direction and commands to get it where he wants to go. The ego also discharges tension created by and met impulse through secondary process. Thinking in which the ego tries to find an object in the real world that matches the mental image created by the its primary process. Example, the ego. Imagine that you are stuck in a long meeting at work. You find yourself growing increasingly hungry as the meaning drags you on, while the it might compel you to jump up from your seat and rush to the break room for a snack. The ego guides you to sit quietly and wait for the meeting to end. And instead of acting up the primal urge for of the it, you spend the rest of the meeting imagining yourself eating a cheeseburger. Once the meal is finally over, you can seek out the object you were imagining and satisfy the demands of the eat realistically and appropriately. Wow. Now, the superego. The last component of personality to develop is the superego. According to Freud, the superego begins to emerge around age five. The superego holds the internalized moral standards and ideas that we acquire from our parents and society, our sense of right and wrong. The superego provides guidelines for making judgments. The superego has two parts, the, con the conscious, include information about things that are viewed as a bad by parents and society. These behaviors are often forbidden and lead to bad consequences, punishments, or feeling of guilt and remorse. The second one is the ego idea includes the rules and standards for behaviors that the ego aspires to. The superego tries to perfect and civilize our behavior and suppresses all the its unacceptable urges and struggle to make the ego act up on idealistic standards rather than on realistic principles. The superego is present in the conscious and preconscious and unconscious. Example of the super and of the superego. For example, if you give in the urges of the eye and the superego is what will cause you to feel a sense of guilt 
or even shame about your action. The superego may help you feel good about your behavior when you suppress your most primal urges. Other examples of the superego include a woman feels an urge to steal office supplies from work. However, the superego counteracts this urge by focusing on the fact that such a behavior are wrong. A man realizes that the cashier at the store forgot to charge him for one of the items he had in his cart. He returns to the store to pay for the item because his internalized sense of right and wrong urged him to do so. A student forgot to study for a story test and feels an urgent to cheat off a student sitting nearby. Even so, he feels like the chance of getting caught are low. He knows that cheating is wrong, so he suppresses the urge. Okay, so now we're in the interaction of the it, ego, and superego. When talking about the it and the ego and the superego, it's important to remember that these are no three separate entities with clearly defined boundaries. These aspects are dynamic and always interacted to influence an individual's overall personality and behavior. With many competing forces, it is easy to see how conflict might arise between the id, ego, and superego. Freud used the term ego strength to refer to the ego ability to function despite these dueling forces. A person who has good ego strength can effectively manage his pressures, while a person with too much or too little ego strength can be unyieldy uh, or destructive. Okay, so what happens if there is an imbalance? According to Freud, the key to a healthy personality is the balance between the ego, the ego, and the superego. If the ego is able to adequately moderate between the demands of reality, the it, and the superego, a healthy and well-adjusted personality emerges. Freud believed that an imbalance between these elements will lead to a maladaptive personality. For example, an individual with an overly dominant eye May might become impulsive, uncontrollable, or even criminal. Such an individual acts upon their most basic urges with no concern for whatever their behavior is appropriate, acceptable, or legal. On the other hand, an overly dominant, dominant superego might lead to a personality that is extremely moralistic and judgmental. A person ruled by the superego may not be able to accept anything or anyone they perceive to be a bad or immoral. So this is about the ego, superego, and the if. There is another concept that I was also reviewing that is important that we know. And it's also about the fixation, fixation or whatever to how pronounced this fixation. What is a fact fixation? Okay. Now let me see if we if I first I needed to see let's see. Okay, the stages. Yeah. The psychosexual and yeah, let's see. Yes. Yeah. Let's review the psychosexual stages first. We by now we should know this uh, five psychosexual stages of development. According to the famous psychoanalyst Simon Freud, children go through a series of psychosexual stages that lead to the development of the adult personality. Freud's stage of human development, which considered of five psychosexual stages of development that describe how personality develops over the course of childhood. While Freud's theory of personality development 
is well known in psychology. In psychology, it has always been quite controversial, both during Freud's time and in modern psychology. One important thing to note that is that in contemporary psychoanalytic theory of personality development have incorporated and emphasized ideas about internalized relationship and interaction and the complex ways in which we maintain our sense or self into models that began with Freud. And here are the overview of Freud's psychosexual stage of development. The oral stage, bear to one year, erogenous son, mouth, a little picture of baby. The anal stage, one to three years, erogenous son, bowel and bladder control. And then comes the phallic stage, three to six years, erogenous son, genital, the Latin stage, six to poverty, libido, inactive. And then the genital stage, poverty to death, maturity, sexual interest. Okay, Freud believed that personality developed through a series of childhood stages in which the pleasure seeking energy of the it become focused on certain erogenous areas. An erogenous zone is characterized as an area of the body that is particularly sensitive to stimulation. During the five psychosexual stages in which are the oral, anal, phallic, Latin, and genital stages, the erogenous zone associated with each stage serves as a source of pleasure. Psychosexual energy of the libido was described as a driving forces behind behavior. Psychoanalytic theory suggested that personality is mostly established by the age of five. Early experiences played a large role in personality development and continue to influence behavior later in life. Each stage of development is marked by conflicts that can help build growth or stifle development. Depending upon how they are resolved, if the psychosexual stages are completed successfully, a healthy personality is the result. If certain issues are not resolved, the appropriate stages fixation can occur. As fixation is persistent, focus on the earlier psychosexual stages. Until this conflict is resolved, the individual will remain stuck in this stage. A person who is fixated on the oral stage, for example, may be over-dependent on others, may seek oral stimulation through smoking, drinking, or eating. The oral stage, age range birth to one year, erogenous son mouth. During the oral stage, the infant's primary source of interaction occur through the mouth. So the rooting and sucking reflex is especially important. The mouth is vital for eating and the infant derives pleasure from oral stimulation through gratifying activities such as tasting and sucking. Because the infant is entirely dependent upon caretakers who are responsible for feeding the child, the child is also develops a sense of trust, comfort through this oral stimulation. The primary conflict at this stage is winning process. The child must become less dependent upon caretaker. If extension occurs at this stage, Freud believed that individual would have issue with dependency or aggression and or extension can result in problems with drinking, hearing, smoking, or nail, or biting. 
Okay, guys, I'm going to stop here because this video, I really wanted to be the last one. But as you can see, we still have a little bit long to go to review. So we're going to stop here. And uh, we're going to continue because still I like to review these stages with you. And then I'm going to review the fixation, which also there is some important things to review. Example of fixation. And I don't want to go quickly. I want you to get tired. And I wanted to be really mindful of the thing that we are learning. And I also wanted to review this other part, which I think is important for our test, which is the um, this one. The or the lipos and the what is no, I don't even know if I am pronouncing well the the clitor or what is the erect uh, so let's see no 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 not this one this one. The Oedipus complex and the Lexa complex. And it's just getting too long. Okay, and we're gonna just review other concept, which is I like to review the psychodynamic as a whole. So we're just gonna stop here. This wasn't the last video. It seems like it. So um thank you so much for being with me. I mean, we had to continue learning together and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for your time and don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Many blessings and see you next time. Adios amigos.